problem. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's been a long time since I've done this, and it's been a really bad week, and I wasn't really focused. So we're gonna it's gonna be kind of free mulling it here. So, <laughs> um, does anybody have any uh, expectations of what they're hoping to see? So I can blast that down immediately. <laughs> Everybody wants it to be Irish or, or uh, you know, they want it to be French or anything like that. And it, it's, it's just, it never is. <laughs> I don't see anybody. Okay. So, and, nobody, and nobody's, nobody's in house, right? Okay. I'm taking that to be a new... Okay, get that out of my way. Okay, so anyway, um, I'm just gonna, I, I, on my site here, medievalbeats.com, if you haven't been there, write the address down. I'm gonna have the stuff in the rum tab here at the top. This is holding the pieces that I'm hoping to go over today. Um, and there's five times this amount on the site. Uh, but these are the pieces I think are standing out, and why they're important and why they're showing a fairly typical thing going on at that period in time. I may dive over. Uh, over here, I'll show you into the main collection. And uh, give it a second to load. And show you all the other stuff I've got over here as well. Um, I'm gonna try to do this century by century and sort of show you items from that era. And, um, Kind of try to show you sort of where beadwork sort of started and where it where it sort of ended in in our time period, and um, it gets fancier as we go along. It's very simple at first, a lot of pearls at first, and then we start getting a little fancier and fancier and fancier. Um, but so I'm just going to start at the beginning. Um, and if anybody has anything specific they want to ask now, um, go ahead. Um, I'm watching. Over to the, I got my side thing over here just in case something pops up. Okay. Um, so where we're going to start, we're going to go here by century. Is that, or, yeah. You have, you have a couple questions or statements in the in the chat. Oh, where's the chat at? Let me see. Um, there's a button oh, on the one. Yeah. There it is. Okay. I'll put that up here at the top then. Okay. Um, Veils. <sighs> I haven't seen it on veils per se. Um, I mean, I do have some headwear to show you, um, but it never seems like it's actually on the veil. It's always like on the hat or on the headdress. Um, but then you know, veils as we do them, you don't usually see that type of veil usually in the pictures. And I try, um, I only have a few sources where it's a, like what I would call like a third level source where it's like, you know, just a, a the, 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 the artist painted a picture of a garden scene with just imaginary people, you know, and he, you know, that, that's like a made up situation. I don't really have a whole lot of those. Um, I, I try to do a lot of portraits. I try to do a lot of, I have a lot of extant items. And unfortunately those things don't seem to survive. But as far as, as like veil edgings, not really, but it's pretty. Don't let that distract you. <laughs> That's where the anachronism comes in. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, in the indigenous question, um, one thing that I've always thought is, is that the Indians had to get the beads from someplace. The Germans seem to be where a, lo a lot of the beadwork, especially early on, is coming from. Uh, the Germans were heavy into beadwork until like the 15, 1500s. And... Um, that's also where the beads were coming from, believe it or not. I know everybody wants to say, oh, sweet beads came from Milano. Milano has a, I mean, had Murano. Murano has a great advertising department. Um, it's hard for Murano to have invented seed beads when seed beads were already being used in Germany before that point. So <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure knowing that um, Germans, German merchants tended to get around, and I know that I've seen a lot of at least early 18th century um, I've seen some uh, bead, basically bead catalogs with like little bead samples to show around and say, hey, I've got these types I can send you. And so I'm thinking kind of something, something like that probably existed. God knows Germans 
certainly like to travel and that's still today. Um, but a lot of the techniques that they did in Germany during the 13 and 1400s is still the same sort of techniques that the Indians were, are doing. Uh, kind of a kind of a lazy straight back back stitch straight stitch, and couching, and it's and it's very much so, sort of still the same. They would do it on parchment, and you do it like right right through leather. So, um, I'll, and I'll get to that here in a second. But 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 basically, I I the the the, the way it's done is 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 actually kind of similar, um, but what they do it on is different, and. I, I, I only have to think that I think I think Germ German merchants probably had some connection to the, to the Indians at some point, probably through Canada and through the tribes in Canada or something. I don't know, but um, oh, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, this is this is about as early as early as I get, and for most, I will say this through most of the stuff I'm going to show you until about the 1300s. And even past, the, and then again you know, into the 1500s, is a lot of pearls, tiny, tiny seed pearls, and usually outlining stuff. Um, and I'll get in that here. This is uh, this is pearls on this. Can I make this bigger? I can make this bigger. I can switch it to make it the active screen, Grizel, if you yeah. want. Uh, wh what? There you go. That, you want? There, so it's bigger like that. Yeah, I go. Oh, I I got it bigger here. Okay. Um, and this is just lines of pearls with gold beads in between. If you can't see that, um, I, I I'm so used to using my iPad. I'm sitting there trying to go. Well, how do I do? How do I ring? <laughs> I can't do this. Um, I don't have a way to to I don't have a gesture for that. Do I? Can I do that on my tablet? Hold on a second. Let me try this out. I didn't even try this. Ah. Uh, can I go? No, okay, never mind. Go back there. Okay, so uh, seed pearls are absolutely most common. Gold pearls, uh, gold beads are also very, very common, as is coral, very early into period. Um, either coral glass or actual s manipulated and drilled coral. Um, there's like a lot of, sometimes I think it's, it's a coral colored glass. Um, and we start to get into some coral colors here later. I'll, I'll show you that. But so here's this. This is um, this is the twelfth. Now this is 1024, um, and, 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 and I said and most of this is German, uh, almost exclusively German. Uh, we have a we have a, we have a Spanish piece, uh, a couple Spanish pieces, and a couple Italian pieces um, coming in, in the 1200s, but. I still think that the Spanish pieces are probably coming from Germans too. So, um, because the technique is just so similar. Um, but so anyway, here's here's just plain strings of of pearls, um, and again, here's little pearls all in a line. I can't get bigger than that on this one. Um, just just strings of of of. Uh, of, of rough pearls, I think it's yep, silver, silver and uh, silver cup and pearls. Um, but until you know, until we and in this bag, I've shown this bag for twenty years. Um, again, just just pearls with embroidery, and um, and that's pretty much part of the part of the, part of the, for the course for a long time um, until we get into. 12th century, we start to get a little bit more adventurous. Still mostly pearls, and these are sort of some of the standout pieces, but all, all pretty much pearls. Um, this one, I think, is probably the, I think, the most, um, probably the most interesting for skating people because it's it's a pictorial done entirely out of seed pearls with 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 some embroidery. And 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 they you know, they're they're being used to form the lines. They're forming the shape, and um, they're forming the picture, and and that's and that's pretty rare at this point. Um, this here is a really famous piece. Everybody usually talks about this one a lot, um, and you can see the embroidery here. That doesn't really do much for it. 
Um, again, it's just gold embroidery, uh, usually what we would call bullion work. And, uh, and pearls. So it, it's, it, it hangs around for a very long time. And even this crown, uh, we, you know, it has a gorgeous cloisonne. If you look here, there's like uh, cloisonne work. Um, I had some, got these pictures online. You can see some really great details on this one of, of, the, of the enameling on here. And, um, but still just seed pearls. And that happens for a very, very, very long time. The, you know, everything you see here is all pearled. Um, this is another one where they're using the where they're using the beads a little bit more, what I would call creatively, um, rather than just outlining things. Um, so we're going to go to let's go to the thirteenth. This is where stuff starts to get fun. Um, immediately start getting into color. Uh, this is where the, this is where the colored seed beads come in, and all the pieces here that are have colored beads are all German. Um, th even though some of the ones that aren't, but the things that are we have an Italian. There's Alfonso the Alfonso the tenth over here. Here's his cap. That's all pearls. It's very fascinating though. Um, I, I've never been able to find any full color pictures of it, but I know it's pearls. Um, but it looks like there's two different colors of beads there, so I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't um, probably maybe a coral or, or a blue. Blue was pretty, blue looks like it came in pretty, pretty fast. I'm still trying to find a color picture of this. I have not been able to. Um, the problem is a lot of the pictures that are in black and white were taken before the, war, the Second World War, and a lot of stuff just got hosed. So... I haven't been able to find any signs of some of this stuff after 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 like 1938. Um, okay, and before I go over to the color stuff, I'm going to show you this. This is this is the other early, another early piece. Um, it does have some color beads. So here's red, and there's some blue beads here as well. Let me get down to um, this. This also has a a belt that goes with it. So here's a good shot. This shows you the blue beads. And um, the, the red or coral beads, I think they just said they were red. And uh, along with stamped gold and, and pearls. And, um, but with th this is from a, uh, a um, a set on, on, a, on a corpse. He had the hat and he had a belt. And he had this uh, this outfit. The outfit didn't really have any beadwork on it, but the belt and hat do. And um, let's see if I can get a good picture. This is probably one of the best pictures of the color of what we're looking into. Uh, we had we had blue and blue, red, and uh, white on this. And some of the pictures are just not big. They should be. If I had a big picture of it, it'd be bigger. Um, the pictures that's displaying here are pretty much the biggest pictures I have of them. And there's a good overall shot of, of the blue and white beads, uh, well, the blue and the pearl beads. So, you know, blue and blue and coral are what come in really early. Uh, I think this was 1320s, I believe. No, 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 sorry, 12. 1275, uh, 1211. Something like that. They aren't really sure when he died. Um, and then um, over here, more pearls, more pearls. And then when we get into the color, we start getting... Actually, that should have been in the 12th century. I, should, I have that in the wrong section. Oh, well. Okay, I can do that later. Um, this is where stuff starts to get fun in this period. This is where we get into... There's green, there's coral, there's yellow, which... Might be glass. It also could be. It could, it could be other things too. I'm not really sure. Um, and the, and of course blue 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 and green glass. And it looks like there might be a couple shades of blue in here. Um, now when we get in this period, this type of beadwork where you have these these. Um, <sighs> 
pictorial um, embroidery, making pictures. Um, this is done on top of parchment. And then the parchment is sewn together, or in this case, I think it's probably glued down because I don't know how else you would do that other with, with some kind of pro pro probably a, a hide glue um, glued down to the to, to this wooden chat to this wooden host box and because um, it's not coming off of there you would think it would come off of there now I think the bottom has been sewn on if you look here the very bottom down here the bottom has been sewn on to the top one but I don't think that the bottom was probably glued then um, but just just some gorgeous colors on here, and this this is a what they call a zaborium or a host box a place for the for the holy host to go, and almost everything that I have until we get to the fifteen hundreds is all pretty much ecclesiastical, and um, there's a good reason to think that a lot of this is probably done by nuns, almost entirely, um, especially since it's in Germany. Um, one thing Germany did was they um, got kind of known for having basically co-ed monasteries. And um, Dr. Jeffrey Hamburger speaks a little bit about this. He has done quite a bit on like the life and the, and the artwork of nuns. And um, let me get back up a little bit. And um, it was very common for them to have a monastery and, a, 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 and, a, and an abbey side by side on the same grounds, working together, you know, working together on the farm and working together on the things that needed done, you know, f f for for their their church. And um, it, I, I Benedictines, I think, a lot, but I can't I can't be positive of that. Um, but anyway, so so here's some good pictures of this one. Um, I think this one really shows. I think in some way shows the color better than the other one. Um, cause it, so you can see the light blue and the yellow comes out pretty good on this one. And I'm not sure if the, like I said, I'm not sure if the yellow is glass or if it's um, something else, but the, typically the red color is typically despised, is described as coral. Although coral, if it was red glass, I'm not sure how you'd really be able to tell unless you saw like the the, the signature markings. And here we go with the um, and I think this actually might be. I can't make it bigger. Um, I actually think this might actually might actually be some some of the first white glass I see because um, it doesn't it, it it's too it's too uniform and not round enough to be a seed pearl. Seed pearls are usually pretty round, but um, this is just a spectacular piece, and if I ever get the the Halberstadt, um, there's a lot of pieces like this in, in in Halberstadt, Germany, and down in Czechoslovakia, and I'll show I'll show some of that next, so some of that soon. Um, but this this is one of the Halberstadt pieces, and oh, I can't wait to go there someday. Um, see there, see this is why I think it's the glass because the color. This is definitely white glass. The, the, the color is a little more opaline, and um, the holes are very clear and not usually usually with pearls. There, it's a very fine hole where this is a larger hole. And here you can see you can see this base. You can see the linen thread. You can see the parchment base, um, and you can see the couching stitches in some places where they've gone through the parchment and then couched over the stitches to keep so they keep their shape. You can look in between the blue beads and you can see some of these couching stitches come up between the blue beads, uh, especially like over here. Um, can you see my cursor? I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Over here in the- Yeah, in the lower, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So over here, you can see there's these tan threads and, and actually dark blue or black threads where they probably have done repair. And you'll see different color threads used all through these. Um, some of the pieces I saw in London were also, <coughs> excuse me, I'm taking a drink again. I live alone now, so I don't talk a whole lot anymore. Um, the, the, um, it was red and green and, and, a, and, a, and a natural, and a natural linen, and they just used whatever they had. And I'm pretty sure they're linen. I, I don't think they're silk, but, um, but you can see the couching that's going on between, between the beads in this shot. And um, 
And yes, I do think these these red ones are coral because I'm seeing these see these striations on this big red bead here. That looks to me like like coral, because coral has those tubular channels in it. And I, I, having had some coral beads, they look like that. So yes, the reds in this case probably is coral, but the white here is definitely glass. Um, and I said, usually when you see white seed, usually it's pearl, but in this case, it's actually white glass. And they haven't really mastered it yet because you see the, the, the shade variation of it, which I think is kind of fascinating. Um, there's some old pictures from before the war. <laughs> I always put the older pictures at the bottom because sometimes they're good for detail. Sometimes the color so kind of doesn't really get tell you everything. Um, but this is one of my favorite pieces. And um, and this is in the 1350s. No. Second half, 1300s, so 12. Sorry. Yeah, 12, so 1200. So this is still pretty early and everything. But this is kind of really the... Um, kind of what I would call kind of the um, the glory, the glory days of, of, of medieval bead embroidery. Um, this piece here, it just goes on and on and on. There's gold beads, and, and then this is pearls. Um, gold beads and pearls and green glass and, and dark, this is actually a dark like navy blue glass. They didn't really have a whole lot of black. It was like a really dark blue. Um, and then you get some real detail shots. But what's interesting about these, if you look, you'll see that someone has drawn all the design onto the parchment. And in, in, a, in a piece I'll show you here later, there's um, a, a good bit of the face removed and you can see the underdrawing. And you can tell that it's someone who's really comfortable with drawing. Because you know, you know, they can just kind of sketch something out quick and it's good, but it's not terrible, you know. You know, and it just, you can sort of tell when someone knows what, what they're doing. And I, so I'm thinking how this probably worked was they would, and then to say, hey, I have to do this. Can you draw me out? Blah. And they kind of worked it like, like, um, uh, illumination. They draw it out onto the parchment and instead of painting it, the nuns would, would go and beat it. And, and since they're usually scribals, you know, scribal, uh, centers in the monasteries they just walk over to the scribal room and say hey William can you do this for me here's another one we like see the you can see the underdrawing of what what was there now what was there they would also do a lot of see this gold piece over here these are uh, bracteets or bezants there's a lot of work a lot of names for them but they'd be these stamped metal pieces they would also use a lot and they would put in on these embroideries and be like just beautiful detailed sequence. Um, and so these bare areas here that you're seeing are where these would go. And I and another piece you'll see in a little bit here, I have another piece that has a crown just like this. And that was probably, it was it looked like it was cut out of silver. And then it was sewn down. And, um, and then this was all, this was probably all filled with pearls. And what's looking to me like, what happens a lot of the times is if there's pearls present, and gold beads present. Usually, they will they would have stripped those at some point. So this one probably had pearls, and they someone came in later and stripped the pearls out. And there's only you know some of them. I think this one might have pearls and glass, you know. Um, but they, they get, but with the kind of embroidery when you're couching, you're only going down every so often. So you clip a thread, and you can get off five or ten beads at a time, and actually they're actually can be pretty easy to salvage, you know, doing that. Um, this, unfortunately, I think is a colorized, a, a colorized um, older book uh, illustration, um, but it gives us a good idea of the colors that are present. Let me see if I can find a better. No, see, there's a, there's a good picture of one of the of one of these stamped co uh, stamped coin style bezants. Um, And this was, uh, and this is another one from Halberstadt. Um, and the thing about Halberstadt, a lot of these things were actually in the Halberstadt Cathedral, and Halberstadt made it through all the wars, so they have all their own stuff. So it's very rare for the stuff that was 
to be to have stayed in the same place. It didn't get moved as you know a, as a church was closed down and moved and got moved out of the area to someplace else. Um, and there's a um, this particular speaking of Halberstadt, this um, miter here is also from Halberstadt, and it's still in use um, for high holidays and things. They will come and and um, they will come and take it to um, to use in the church. And then they'll put it back in the museum. And, um, and, and you know, again, there's coral, there's light blue, there's like, th this one actually might be black, but usually it's like a very dark blue. Uh, and there's gold beads and green beads and of course the pearls. And, and I think these rubby coral again, because they're not quite as red as a red red would be. Um, but yeah, so this, you know, some of the stuff at Halberstadt is still in active use, like like this, uh, uh, oh, admit, okay. So, okay, this is another one of my favorite pieces here. Again, this because of the color. The color alone is just spe spectacular. Um... And in person, they've got it under protected light, so the colors don't look quite as bright. But you can see the scale of this. This would be probably hanging on the wall behind the altar, or above a, you know, or above a table, or something like that at at the altar. And um, just the the details. And here is another one where the pearls have been salvaged, um, just completely scraped out of it. And in some cases, they, they, even though some of the parchment has sort of worn away on this. Uh, but usually what they would do is they would do it on the parchment and then sew it onto a ground base. And then they would do the outlining with more pearls, with, with, with more uh, beads. Um, and it's hard to tell in German because the word for German for bead is pearl. So you have glass perlin, you have, vi you have uh, 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 what's it, Wasserperlen. For like water perlin, I don't know. So you have like all these different worlds. You have to figure out all the whole, whole category. Uh, so? Yeah, I, I was just going to answer that. Uh, linen okay, or okay. Um, I think it's linen a lot of the time, at least in Germany. Um, just from the linen thread that I have. And it sort of looks like it sort of has that same kind of look when it's pulled and it's, and it's been and it's frayed. It sort of has the same look. Um, it's often on a silk base, though. So, they, you know, there, there may be some silk in there. I honestly think they probably used whatever they had. Whatever color was the right color at the time that they have it. So I, I don't really think they really had a preference um, for, like, like here, here you can see they're using red threads and there's white threads and <laughs> You know, I think they just used whatever they had. And because um, a lot of it was just going to be hidden by the beads anyway. See, here's red thread here, too. Like in, in these beads, there's red. And the little plaques and the and the large the little plaques that were here, little gold plaques, those have been salvaged off. So all the gold was salvaged off of this for the most part. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't get those, ironically enough. They took the, these, see these little gold ones here? See, that tells you what, what probably was all over this. These little small areas here were like these. And um, I just think that they just used whatever they had. And I think, I think I, I don't know, it just tells me probably it was mostly linen. You can get linen really, really fine. And you can get linen fine enough for beads. I'm not sure you would have to have silk for that. Um, you just might have to knot off more often because the linen does fray probably a little bit faster than the silk would. But the, the linen costs less. Um, now this piece here, I'll go to this one because I got to see this one in person. I got to see another one in person. Um, I got to see these at the V&A. Got to go in the back room. So these, these close-up shots are my pictures here. Um, and you can see, I wish I could get this bigger. Let's see if I can open this new tab. Hold on. Uh, 
Okay, we'll do this. Um, you can see here this underdrawing of this crown and and even some on the face. And it's just, you can just tell someone, you know, they did, they did a center line, you know, someone who knew what they were doing drew this out. And there's little bit, bits of the silver crown that are still left that they, that they were sewn down. They just cut through them to remove that silver. And, um, and here's where the pearls were all here on the outside. There's green thread and white thread and blue thread and red thread and, um, and just everything in the, Everything in the universe was, they just used whatever they, whatever they had, I think. And there's white down here. So, but this, and this is on parchment. And like I said, they would, they would sew onto the parchment and then attach it onto the fabric, which would, which would make cleaning it somewhat easier because then you could, you could detach this, clean the garment when it needed to be cleaned and re, and re, and reattach it. Wouldn't be easy, but you could do it. Let me get that out of the way. Um, okay, let's go back to here. I'm getting some, some close-up shots here. See, this is just showing, this is the study mount. I was just trying to show the beads on the edge. But this is with the, the stitching on the edge there. And, of course, beads in period are never very, very consistent. I mean, they're still pretty consistent considering, considering the times they were working in. But, um... Here you can see some of the pearls they missed for whatever reason. They didn't, couldn't get their little fingers in on them. And yeah, I probably should have done this on my iPad. I could go pew, pew, make things big. And there's, there's green and white, and there's some blue up here, and, you know, anyway, so, um, I really love this shot here, because you can see how delicate they got to make these little fine little rows to get each individual finger, and when I line up uh, a modern size 11 seed bead, that's that's about the size they were using between 11 and a 10 uh which is good for us because that's the sizes we can get and <laughs> and um it, it's the same size and so it's it's really nice to have to be able to use something the same size and and you can measure that by like when they say it's so many centimeters wide you go how many inches is that and eleven, um, and a size eleven seed bead is eleven beads per inch. So you can you can measure sort of the size of the bead by measuring how you know how wide the piece is and taking okay this this much is about an inch of it. So how many beads are in that in that section? Okay, that's about that's about an eleven. So you know that that that's how you usually can kind of figure out the size. Um, but yeah, it was really nice being able to. To see that in person. It was also weird because they were taking notes from me. So that was weird. Um, but yeah, more just more details just showing. Um, and, and all these, and you can tell that they, they actually used a needle and not like a, a hardened quill or something to make these holes. Because the holes are um, rectangular. And, and period needles, they, they were rectangular. They'd have a flat, they'd have a flat eye that was, that was hammered flat. And, ch and and you know, whittled and chiseled down, you know, and then punched for the hole. And you can see that in in in, in the shapes of, of the holes that are left is that they, that they used that they were using needles. They they were not you know using some other method. Um, here's my favorite boys down here. I call these the BGs um, because one looks. <laughs> <laughs> and there's and there's a distant cousin. The, this this one here, um, this boy here is is over in Germany. The rest of these are are at the VNA. The other two are at the VNA, and um, the, these were these were uh, re taken during wartime from an auction. So some of the, they got separated from each other, and uh, so I, I never got to see this particular one. But you can tell he's from the same thing, and I actually did a, I actually did a a um, a thing down here where I compared 
the beadwork from one from the beadwork to another one like this is <laughs> here they are all compared all, all all they are together um hold on come on i know you're bigger than that well anyway um I know that they're so I have Barry Robin and Maurice as I call them the Bee Gees and <laughs> and um and putting them all together you can tell that they were using they were done by the same hand the, you know the way they worked the corners the, the the amount of rows everything the way they lined up everything matched so um they were supposed to be together and they were originally whatever on this piece here these had been removed from it um and they are absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, again, coral and blue and gold and pearl with placards that have been removed. Um, and you see there's some bright blue beads here too. Those got taken off probably. There's probably coral and pearl. Looks like coral and per, um, blue and coral going all around the edge. It would have been really pretty. Here's it. This one's Barry, and um, this one this one's probably in the best shape. But you see, all the pearls have been removed. So, sadly, it happened to seem like it happened a lot, um, which is why I really love the um, some of these ones from Halberstadt. That that it, this one. It's the thing that's sad about this one. Not only is it just the colors, but just so many placards. They, they just took so many of the gold stampings, but at least, and they and they took so much of the skirt too so i'm thinking the skirt was probably something valuable it looks red but i can't but the red wasn't taken so maybe it, maybe it was maybe it was more pearl and they used red thread that could be it um okay so this is a this is a 13th century and you know we, we do have still a lot of pearl work going on like like this for the holy roman empire um for, for various um kings of the Holy Roman Empire had these hugely with with enamels and pearls, and this is directly on the leather here, um, and this is the, from the outfit he wore with the Dalmatic we saw earlier. He had a couple pairs of shoes that he wore, and a, and a pair of boots, and he had a whole bunch of stuff he had made up, and um, so that's and that was from twelve twenty, I believe. But, uh, and then we have little oddities like this of this century. And this is a reliquary, so reliquaries get a little funky sometimes. Uh, but they've got, they've got what we would essentially call bugle beads. This is, this is one of the few places we find bugle beads. Um, and they've got these, uh, beaded tassels down here at the bottom. And little, pl little placards and little sheets of, well, I think they call them crystal. Um... And I think they're saying that they're, they're, uh, they're gold temps. These might be silver, silver, um, uh, silver bugle beads. So they may not be glass. Um, but still, it still counts as a bugle bead as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I'm also thinking they also probably mean these, uh, these figurals here. But so we got some gems, we got some, and this is all, and, and, and I mean, this kind of thing, it's, the silk is always, the ground The ground material is always silk. Um, almost always. And I got to see this one in person, too. And you can just see how much of it has just been taken apart. I'm about to get in a package. Um, but it was hard to get pictures of because it was just so little beads left on it. They think that there may have been big sections of, of like silver and gold plaques with little sections of beads between was what we were sort of thinking. And it just got, it just got salvaged. Um, here's sort of an overall pick of what it, well, what's left of it. But so they think that it probably was a checkerboard and it just had like plaques and you know, every every other thing was plaques and beads and plaques and beads. Um, so anyway, so now, so that so we're in the 1300s now. I'm sorry, the 12th, 13th century now. 
and color starting to get involved. And this is really about about I think probably like I said probably the golden the golden age of color here. Um, the fourteenth is where we start to get into more portraiture, and we, we, we're still getting some color. And this is where we come over into. Uh, uh, this is this is when the when the miters got big, and we've got miters and sudariums, and th this is uh, this is probably what I would think of as the masterpiece of this century. This is in in what's known as Keb, um, Czechoslovakia now. Uh, it used to be called Eger, and it used to be part of Bavaria at the time. Um, so it was part of you can say it was part of Germany at one time, but then it sort of was, but it sort of wasn't. With the way they changed changed all the time. Um, this is a massive, massive piece. And for all intents and purposes, other than what some beads that have been lost, it has not been salvaged, which is what makes this really important. Um, this sort of shows you kind of a nice view of like of all the metalwork that's left on there. Um, of all the the bezants that are on there that have not been removed, the the the, the, the beadwork which is now firmly white white seed, um, and the blue and and there's various blues and there's reds, and uh, again the coral color, um, just fantastic. And, and, and largely, the, the way they made the beads is still similarly the way they make them now. Um, just a long, sort of long blow, you draw them really long, and then um, they will cut them and then sort of put them into a bin, in a heated bin, and roll them around on each other while it's still hot. So they don't stick together, but they all kind of get get a little rounded off. And uh, sometimes you get the the ends, which are a little lopsided on the ends where the end of the drag was. And uh, just and it, this here is, is painted. This is a peach of painted parchment here. Um, just just awesome. Some of y'all get to see that. And this is another one of the one of the rare ones that's still in the place that it was made and was hung. So it never got. It never got uh, moved or disrupted by war or anything like that. They may have, you know, taken it down and, you know, taken it someplace to preserve it, like in a safer spot, you know, like in the, you know, in the in the basement or something. But it didn't get taken away. Um, hold on, I'm gonna put that over here so I can see it out of my way. Um, this is where we start to show, get a lot more of the. Of, I have a lot of. I, I also do some research on on under the, the bracteats or the um embezzlement. So I have a lot of stuff on here that's just for that in this period. Rizal? Yes. Where was that piece you were just showing that that, um, that was in, it was in Czechoslovakia. Okay. Just is is it's just over the border from Germany. Okay. I mean, it's literally a hop and a skip and a jump across the river. Um is it's what's now called Keb. And um but it used to be called Eger, and uh, and it's just over the border from Germany. It used to be Germany. It used to be Bohemia, actually. So, um, but now it's now it's now it's Czech Republic, um, which is where all our seed beads come from today. And I still maintain that's probably where they came from back then. Um, I just think Germany had an established um, glass guild system by the 1300s. And they would make stained glass. They'd, they'd have glass blowing. It, glass beads just seem like they'd be a natural extension of that, you know, as, as a way to use up as a way to use up waste, if nothing else. You have small amounts of color. Hey, let's, let's do something with them, you know. And uh, but you know they were doing, you know, you, you saw what we were looking at in the 13th century. M Murano, Italy is credited as, as as inventing the seed bead in the 14th century. Well, how could they have done that if they're using them 200 years ahead of time? In Germany already, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> obviously, while they may be good at blowing glass, they did not invent the seed bead. Um, but but here, pearls start to get really start to take over again. 
Um, but uh, some of the pearl work they, they're doing is uh, outstanding. Um, I mean, this is this is the, and this is Italy, and it's just just astounding. I'll try to get it bigger for everybody. Still, you know, still the little plaques and stuff, and but just oh, I think I think this is the Amalfi, the Amalfi Minor. Am I right? Yeah, the Amalfi Minor. Yay! Um, but uh, here's another piece. I'll show you this this Sudarium over here in a minute. Here's another piece with 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 lots of these little uh, stamps and some more beadwork. Again, they tried to tried to part it out, get that gold off of there. And uh, but yet the other ones stayed. I think it depends on how how shoddy it was sewn down or how how the stitching was going. Okay. Uh, this is now. I don't know if you know much about the Catholic Church. This is this is Sudarium. They hang on the crozier, which the abbot usually holds, or whatever. That's the that's the crook thing that they, that they hold. And he's not actually supposed to hold it with his hand. Um. So he hold they hold it through this cloth, and um. So that's what this is, and this is just a very decorated. Basically, the, the the decorated hanger for that cloth um, to hang off that crozier, and um, there's the whole picture of it. I can't tell if there's beads going down it or not. I don't think. I think it might just be embroidery. And again, this is Halberstadt. This is more from Halberstadt. So they have a long, whole bunch of nuns there <laughs> that were very very good with beadwork. Um. If somebody else sees something specific that they want to want me to dive in on, I go, "Hey, what was that thing over there?" I'll I'll go back to it. Um, and here is another reliquary bag. Again, you see bugle beads. Now these I think are are made of crystal. Yes. So these are quartz, um, quartz crystal bugle beads, and um, but that's one of the few places I've, I find bugle beads. Uh, we really don't really see those till much later, as as a rule. Um, Quick question. Yeah. So um, I would imagine for anything that is worn, it's probably going to be sewn on for the beads. Were there beads ever glued onto anything? The only gluing I can ever I can ever find is on that one that one um, host box. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and and that was glued onto the wood. Um, and I, I don't even see reference to it being glued, but I can't think of any other way they could have attached it other than wood. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so I, uh, everything, everything seems like it's sewn. Um, but also I think a lot of times they, they sort of took the same thing as what they did with the parchment. They would sew it on to, sew it on to trim or sew it onto fabric and then attach that fabric to the, to, you know, to, to the garment. So then the garment could be laundered, you know? Because because sometimes if, especially if they are doing it on parchment, you don't want to get that wet. So um, again, here's here's more pearls. Pearls you can do anything you want to with pearls. Um, if, if you want to work with seed pearls or or white seed glass, um, they tons of stuff. You got I got tons and tons of references. Like this, I think is seed. This, this I think is probably yeah. I don't have a whole lot of better pictures of this. I wish I did. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next century. I thought this was probably the best way to do it. I, I already have all this stuff. I was like, I already have it all organized. I, I hate to reinvent the wheel. Um, where am I in the 14th? Okay. 
By which point, we start getting into portraits. And this is where it starts to get, move into clothing. Um, but mostly in Germany. <laughs> Almost entirely in Germany. There, there's a couple places. We get we have a Denmark coming in. And there's, I think there might be an Italian or a Spain or something. But that doesn't mean they weren't from Germany. <laughs> or they didn't have a German family or something. Um I mean, we still have some, we still have some 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 other, you know, seed glass stuff coming in here, like this. Unfortunately, I said this is another another late period uh, coloration, um, because it just was it was in a book and they colorized it, so don't really have any color photos of this, but it is multicolored seed beads and and just and this is just couched couched looks like um. Couch roll of fabric, honestly. It looks like it might be a little piece of fabric that's just rolled and couched down. But, uh, and, you know, and then more of those, those stampings. But we start getting into clothes now. And, um, like I said, almost all of this is German. I think I think that one might be Italian. Um, and, and headdresses, and especially these, these sleeves. And I've got a few of these sleeves, um, it was some kind of order that they were in that allowed them to have these. These they would they would get the right to wear these these beautifully uh, embroidered dresses with these sleeves. And um, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what it is. That one's wearing a pelican, but I don't know. Here's another one. And it, it was definitely a thing. And uh, I got about three of those. And. But then, then, then you just have stuff like this, where she's just she's just covered in in pearl work on her hat and on her dress and on the bands, and like I said, all, almost all of this is still German with using seed pearls, um, probably you know fresh water. Um, here's another one, and you can see all the ones in here I got. This is all just like. German, 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 German. Because <laughs> the English didn't really get to it until like the 1600s, 1700s. And then, they, then they, they go crazy with it. But it was all pretty much German for the most part. You got a few standouts, but it's all pretty much German. Um, 15th, okay, here we go. Uh, this, 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 this chasuble down here, uh, that's, that's coral. Um, almost exclusively coral. Give me show you that picture. Um, and it is real coral. And then just, just still tons of pearls. But then here's another here's another sleeve. And of course on her on her dress and her hat as well. And that might be about, but, but but if you notice, you know, veil, no pearls. Um, this here actually does have a little bit, right there. That's about the only one I can think of. That's it. <laughs> and this looks like gold work and pearls on her hat. So there's a little bit, but it's only on like like one side of it. I think that's probably rectangular. And I think it's just on just the one edge. It's not around the whole thing. So it probably went down the two short sides. Uh, probably would have fallen off, honestly, had been been anything more on there. Um, let's see. So so that's so that's the that's the that's the fifteenth. Uh, like I said, you know, still still lots of clerical stuff, mostly still church, but that this is where it's this is where it starts to get into um, the. Uh, here's another lady with a sleeve, and she's got her hat, and she's got a little bit more on her on her dress. So that's some kind of order. It could be a merchant order, you know. It could be like you know some. Rich wives thing or something. I'm not quite sure. 
Uh, this hat, though, is spectacular. And pearls on her dress, of course, again, too. Uh, so let's go to the 16th. I'm trying to keep this under an hour and a half so people... Because <laughs> if I have a chance, I'm going to show you my bag from 1623. <laughs> 1627. Um, if I can. So, hold on. Century. 16th. Okay. We do have some standout pieces here as far as extant examples, a few, but this is where we start to really get the clothing really, really big. And we have a couple really standout pieces here. Um, just, you know, this is, this was actually kind of interesting. I think this is, yeah, this is Russian. And uh, the way they're using the line work, you know, instead, instead of, Filling in with beads, they're line doing the lining with beads, and that that you know, the, the 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 artist the technique is a little different. Um, big in this period is the sweet bags, and I own one of these, <laughs> and um, and they're all about the same size. They're all about six inches wide and about four inches tall, and they all have most of them all have the same kind of uh, text, some kind of text across the top, and it starts at a certain point and there's usually tassels and a drawstring and it, it's it there are, I feel like six of these on the site and uh the one of the few changes that isn't German here um is this lady here who I think is from Poland and she for some reason likes this this whole wimple, it does a, does a, I, I, for lack of a better word, uh, a wimple of, uh, of, of beadwork. And it's just, ex, you know, here she is before. And then she has all these pictures of these extravagantly beaded and jewel encrusted um, Queen Yadwiga, oh, Queen Barbara, I think. And that's before. But yes, and, and she has a couple that she wore multiple times, and then she, but she had more than one. So I don't know why that came on. What, what caused that? I haven't seen anybody ever else wear that. Um, and similar to that, I have this particular headdress. That's all in pearls and pearls in her coat. So still a lot of pearls. A lot, a lot of pearls. Um... And some of these pictures, I think some of these pe people have seen before. Uh, pearls, 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 pearls. Th this is pearls in, in colored embroidery. Um, there's another Russian hat. One of the few, you know, like I said, I have very few Russian things, but that that's, I got like, I got, I got a couple of them. There's not much to it, but I got it. So if you know Russian folks, there you go. Um, and this is a German hat. Again, pearls, but that's pretty cool. Um, more just really spectacular one-armed dresses with extravagantly uh, beaded headwear. This is not a this is not one armed, but just a lot of bit, just a lot of pearls. So, and unfortunately, we don't really have a whole lot of extant dresses, but I do have one coming up coming up soon. Um, now, this one, this is a portrait, but I don't know how much I. Probably yeah, if that's that, I probably should remove that one. I, don't, I try not. I try to do real portraits and not so much of the. Uh, um, okay, so there's that. This is a real interesting piece. This is uh, like a a, a water. 
Oh, like a, like a water flask, I believe. Oh, it says a purse, but I think there's a purse on the back of it. Um, I think there's a, a drawstring purse on the back, so I think the front might actually be like like a like a bottle. And um, but yeah, so pearls on that. Just very extravagant. So we're going to go ahead and go on into the um, the seventeenth, if nobody, and that's where we're going to start winding down here. Oh, hold on a minute. Everybody saw Dracula there, right? Okay, I, I'm just going to... This is something I've been looking at. So while this is not an original picture of Dracula, this one was supposedly painted off the original. And one thing I like about it is um, the hat here. I always thought when I saw pictures of this that it was it was pearls, but it, it, is, it is pearls. I think these are pearls up here. And I think these are small pearls, but I think they're sitting on top of sequins. Because when you look at the side over here, they certainly don't have the profile of a round pearl. They look like they're definitely a, a round thing sitting on top of a shiny flat thing. And uh, so I think this is actually like, 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 a, like a studded sequins, which means this thing would have just sparkled in candlelight like crazy. But... Uh, Normally I wouldn't have put that I wouldn't put that up here because it's not a, a not a, a first source but um, it was supposedly painted off the original which I don't know I think the original has gotten like lost or destroyed over time or, or probably in one of the Nazi caves someplace still hiding away. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go to seventeenth and this is where we start to get this is where England starts to get involved. Um, and these, and these sweet bags, those are English and the bags and the baskets and the, and the, and the, the panels on top of boxes and hanging on walls and even mirrors and books are all colored beads and, uh, and usually not pearls, um, but colored beads on, uh, on, well, yeah, we have some, like, this is, I think this is, a. Uh, this is another Polish one, and there's, I think this is, yeah, that's that's probably Russian or Polish, and this one is interesting. Um, I've never seen that headdress before anywhere, ever. I have, I, I, this says Spanish, but I have never seen anything like, like coming out of anything else like that, but I, I, I had to put it in. Um, but yeah, these, these are called sweet bags, these little, this is the bag that I own. Um, it's a six, like I said, it's about six by four. They're all about six by four. There were tassels originally and they've been removed. Um, they all have tassels. If you, if you look, do I have, hold on, let me go down here. Do, 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 do. Where are my tags? Uh, but they all are very much this, very similar. Um, these are done with a right angle weave. If anybody's ever done done uh, netted beadwork, um, that's what that's what the stitch is called, right angle weave. And um, they're made of leather, usually topped with topped with silk. Uh, there's usually almost always some kind of uh, stitch that goes in through the leather lining all the way through, and that's what the beadwork hangs on. Uh, the beadwork's done separately and then brought in and attached to it. Um, and there's just, there's just, you know, they're just, they're just beautiful. So here you can see that, that, that attaching stitch, like a braid on there. Mine is a little finer. Um, let's see if I can find the picture that shows it here. You can sort of see right here. You see the stitch that runs into the um the leather and that leather on the inside is this like like a finest kid leather you've ever felt um it's just so delicate it's and it's soft still um and then they sewed the here you can see the stitches along the top where they sewed the uh the silk to to, to the uh, interior bag and then they did the stitching 
there's this heavy line right here. You can see this top line above the beads. That's that's the line that goes into uh, that that that's 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 holding on the beads. Um, but if I have time, I, I I'll pull up my camera maybe and try to put it up. And he goes, look, here it is. Um, so let me get these 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 portraits in these bags uh, and these boxes. These are just like they call them caskets, but they're just they're just a, a you know storage box for your for your things. Um, this one I think is probably one of the one of the best examples, uh, just because the 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 stitching is so, the, the beadwork is so nice, and they've done a little bit what I would call peyote stitch on this, um, although it seems to be a little more freeform. Um, not uh, on a loom per se, but you know they'd stitch down and they just keep doing it and going back through the cloth. But it's definitely sort of a peyote type stitch. Um, but we're, you know this is six, so we're in the 1600s now, and uh, oh, this is the one piece of extant non-religious clothing that I can. <laughs> that I can find for women. Uh, it's supposedly a wedding dress. And it's Hungarian. And uh, those are all coral beads. Let me get the big pictures up here. For all, for all I can tell, it's coral. And that gives you a little bit of a detail on some of the, some of the color variation in the, in the coral. And it's on the bodice and on the skirt. And it comes well up halfway up the skirt. And this just looks like they, they did some applique of of a uh, of fa fabric or embroidered or embroidered fabric and then did the beadwork on top of that. So applique is always is always the best way to go if you're going to do something like this, because it it makes sure that the because beads are heavy, and when you put pressure on on the threads, it it it, it stresses out the fabric. So if you're going to do something like this, you definitely want to do it, it on on an appliqued surface, because I wouldn't just do it on silk a silk alone. The silk should be, you know at least maybe quilted in some way to a stiffer fabric and then and the bead should go down into the stiffer fabric because it will not be able to hold it. The silk won't be able to hold it on its own. Um, this, this shows you, it looks like it's all embroidered. Using what I would probably call needlepoint stitches, that, that herringbone on that large pe heart-shaped petal there, that's very much like a... Uh, like a like a like a, a typical uh, um, needlepoint sort of filling stitch, and there's some close-ups of the herring. As you close-ups of the of the coral beads, like I said, those striations there are how you tell it's it's coral. Those white striations. But so that's, um, let's do some boxes. This is a really pretty, I got a couple cool boxes here too. So I got a couple minutes. Good place to find stuff that if, if you're not finding it on a museum is go to Sotheby's. I recently did a scathing run on Sotheby's and another couple uh, auction sites. And a lot of these portraits and boxes and a few other things I got, and the bags, a lot of those bags, uh, came off of came off of those auction sites because they keep they keep a history of, of what they what they sold, and well they they're not in any museum usually, usually they're going into private collections, and uh, it's a good place to pick up to pick up items that you might not otherwise find. Um, At this point, they're starting to get a very wide selection of colors. I mean, how there's, I think there's five shades of green in this.
So besides the glass beads, do we know where the pearls and coral were coming from? Um, Germany was known quite well for having a, a, a lot of streams and freshwater pearls come from rivers and streams, um, from little mussels and stuff. So, so that's where those were coming from. Uh, coral um, from the ocean, and, the, and if they had a if they had a coast, and just general trade, I don't know where they got them from specifically, but um, there was definitely a market for it because there's a ton of coral beads. Um, and that's what I've been trying to figure out is like where they're getting. I've been trying to find some kind of source for, like you know where the beads were being made. You know, who, where, where, where you like where the bead market was, and certainly there was a bead market somewhere, you know. And um, I haven't been able to find any of that so far, just that they were there. Let me add another box here. Um, this one I think is really spectacular. This one is just really beautiful. And this is this is more of a freeform embroidery, whereas we saw something a couple minutes ago that was basically peyote. This this is more of the freeform, where they're just making it making it fit. <laughs> and this is all glass. I'm not seeing any coral. Um, hell, there's even orange in this one. And but again, this this is English. So the, when the English get into something, they get into it big time. <laughs> and here is the first, this one of the first times I've seen the striped beads. And I, there's a piece of Cincinnati that I got to see, and they had a lot of striped beads, yellow with purple and orange stripes and blue stripes, and, and they had a whole bunch of striped beads. I don't know if I have any pictures of that up or not. I have to, I'll have to look. Um, oh, sorry. I went go this way. And again, that's on, you know, and that box is lined with silk, but I'm pretty sure they probably, um, th since nothing was showing on this, this one, I can't really tell what kind of cloth they used. Does it, t does it tell me on this? It just says it was lined in silk. Yeah, and this one came from Christie's. Yeah, Chris, Christie's and, and Sotheby's, and there's another one I can't remember. Fortunately, this is the only picture I think I've got of this one. Um, anybody want to see something specific? Have any questions about anything? Um... Here's a book. I should show you a basket too. Pro yeah, loot. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw I saw that too. <laughs> Fortunately, that's the only picture I've got of that one. If I have more pictures, are underneath the main picture. But and I always I, I sometimes I just have one. Oh, these are oh I should show these mirrors. Okay, I got a couple more things. Um, there's a couple mirrors here. I've got three mirrors in total, but only two of them have significant amounts of beadwork. This is all beaded. It's just amazing. And then the um, the inset here is tortoise shell. So this frame and, and the, the frame going around the outside of this is tortoise shell. And this lobular look, you'd think it would be so strange, but I've got another one that's lobed as well. Um, <coughs> now this one just has beads on the edges, I believe. Hold on. <coughs> this one is just beaded on the edges and the rest of this is just embroidery. But I've got another mirror that's also, where is it? It's more of a square mirror. Here we go. This one. This is all beaded. And I got some pictures of this one. <coughs> Excuse me. This you can sort of see the texture of the beads pretty well. I forget the technical word for that gold couch work. 
did they combine the gold couch work for with the beading? Um, yeah, on some of the earlier stuff, I do have pearls with um, like gold bullion. Yeah, but yeah, um, and there is, I, I can I can go back and show you that in here in a second. Um, some gold bullion work. And there's some really good details on on the beads here, and it looks like they've got a little bit of mold. Looks like it's getting a little bit of mold there on those green beads. Interesting. Hmm. Near the leather. Yeah, see the beads? See that see that haze on the beads? I think that's I think it's well it's either dust or mold. It could be dust, but Try to grab every picture I can find of something because it may, it may help somebody. Um, okay, so you want to see some gold, some bullion work. Hold on. And on the site, I have it organized. Uh, everything, which is just everything in one big row, one big dump. Uh, extant items only, by century, and by item type. So you can usually find what you're looking for fairly easily. Um... Okay, let me get down here and find that one bag I was talking about with some had some bullion on it. I think this has some. So, Grizel, all this is publicly available on your website? On yeah, website? yeah, medievalbeads.com. Everything's up there. And some of the specific peach pieces that I've touched on, I have in the rum section. Um, so, I've got some of the stuff I, I, I know I, I wanted to hit on specifically is in there. But everything everything's on medievalbeads.com. Um, let's see. I can't think of where it is right now. Yeah, there's a beaded handle uh, uh, meat fork. You don't see that every day. <laughs> and a bellows, a beaded bellows. Uh, I think there's some bullion work on this. Oh, this one. There it is. Hold on. This one has embroidery, and you can sort of see, I think there's some bullion work in here that has got rusted. That's what I think this is. Mm. This brown stitching, I think, is bullion work that is rusted. Because mm -hmm. you can kind of see it over there. Here, this, this let me get bigger. Um, but that's what I think that is as well. And there, I, I have some other pieces on here as well. I just can't think of where they are right now. I, I kind of blew by them, and I well, it would it would have been oxidized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, there is some on here. I definitely do have some, um, especially like some of these uh, um, these whole the the cl clerical pieces. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some on there, but. Uh, And lots of reliquaries, lots of reliquaries, so many reliquaries. Um, let me pull this back open again. This was what I opened up by accident, and I think it actually has some. Yeah, it does have some. There. So, there, so, so I think you can see it on there. Yeah. As well as just like, you know, gilded gilded rope twists did I open this one up but uh, anyway so if anybody's got questions <coughs> hit me um,
if you guys want, I can pull up my my bag and show you. I was going to try to do an overhead on it, but I don't know if I can do that in enough time. We had a hard, we had a hard enough time getting started. So, <laughs> did you show a picture of one of the uh, baskets? Um. Yeah. Hold on a second. I will. I will put in basket, and you can tell me which one you want to see. Um. Doesn't matter which one. Okay. Well, I got a whole section here. Let's, let's go to that. Let's just do that then. Item type. Uh, baskets, boxes, and books. Okay. Um, we'll go to the first one. We'll just work our way through. This one looks like a right angle weave one. That one's very different compared to what I have uh, elsewhere, because um, this oh, one is more. This one is more of of your of of, of just a regular embroidery, where it's just sewn. You, you you know you're just sewing it down as it fits and trying to form the shapes. And the use of the basket, I don't think anybody really knows. Can't imagine they would actually put anything in it. Other, I, I was thinking maybe for like a wedding, like, a, like for a present presentation. Yeah. Or a gift or something. Um, other than that, I can't think of what they, and just, and just a display. I can't think of what they'd use them for. Certainly not to put food in or anything like that. Um, to attract a husband. <laughs> But, Maybe to hold your jewelry or fabric. Like, no, they're like they're like this big. Oh, they're like that. You know, like scarf, gloves. I think they just sat them on a table or something, but um, or it, I think maybe they were given as christening gifts, possibly. Um, not really sure. There, that's a good. There's a good picture. Show off their opulence. Yeah. And, you know, and when the English pick up something, they go crazy with it. Uh, let's see. Here's another one here. Go a little wider. There. I'll move this over to here. That metal or parchment for their faces, which are somewhat obscured. That I think was probably was probably a painted thing, and it's just worn away. I think with time, mm -hmm. I can't really get any closer than that. So I'm I'm thinking it, it might have made me just been, been a painted parchment. I've seen that before. Because you know when you get that into the faces, people look really look really stupid. With beaded faces, <laughs> especially being so small, so I understand why they did it. Um, was that that was, I, that was that one? Okay, let's do this one. Fortunately, I don't have a better picture of that one. Um, that is one of the few three D pieces I have. Um, I actually, ooh, this one. I actually have a, something. I'll show you that other one in a second. Hmm. And so this one has some stump work involved with the padding out of the people and of the lion and and uh, and then the you know the there's some wire work going on in the in the flowers over here <laughs> little beaded eyeballs little beaded eyeballs <laughs> just little white dots uh this is another piece that I did. I, I, I meant to show this, and I didn't get a chance. Um, again, they, they call it a basket, and it isn't. It is a basket. So I'll, I'll pull this one up. Um, it's just in a box. And then you have your your right angle weave. There's looks like some peyote type stuff. There's just in just tons of three D. It's just it's just amazing. And again, it looks like they've probably done a, a, a painted face.
And it could be painted on leather. I could maybe see them even painting it on like, on like a fine leather and the leather's just, just, you know, gone away with time. Uh, let's see another basket. We did, I think we did that one. This one's really interesting, even though it's not a basket. This was a box top. And the colors on that are just fantastic. There we go. But then this one, they, you know, they supplemented it with just some regular embroidery here and there, you know, but. This was for a sewing box. And that's the lid you see there is the, there's the, the ha handle for the lid that you open up to get to the, um, to open up the box inside. And else have any special requests, questions? What about the one uh, third from the left on the, uh, with the arch over top of the lady, the casket, the one oh, there. Yeah. This one. Okay, one second. Now this one, I can tell they sewed the beads in individually, which is a pain in the butt. And how can you tell? Because none of them are really lined up. Oh, I see. I see. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> like up here, they 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 did they did them in rows, but then here, it's all just one bead at a time, which is the worst possible way you could do it. <laughs> right, and then the arch and everything. Right, I see. Okay. Yeah. They crowd. They'll push. You know, they get round surfaces against round surfaces, and when you do them in lines, at least the lines make them stay in line. <laughs> The flat surface against a flat surface, but when you start doing it in, you know, individually like this, they, they you get crowding, you get gaps, and it, it and it's insane, honestly, because it takes so much longer. <laughs> so I think you mentioned the word earlier. Um, you've got caskets and boxes. Did they ever use beading for reliquaries? Oh, tons of reliquaries. Okay. Yeah. Tons, um, things, bones and such. Yeah, um, let's see if I that can gentleman it. there it looks like a 3D Mayolica piece or something. Yeah, that guy, right under where your cursor was. Oh now. yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a reliquary. There's a pair of those. Okay. Huh. And that's just like you know, and, and I put that in because it's got beads on it. Um, it's not really. I, I, I try to be very liberal as of what what I'm including. You know, if it's got if it's got beads on it, I try to include it, even if it may not be what my primary focus is, because I'm sure I'm helpful to somebody. And I think he's wax, actually. I think I think they're made of wax. Yeah, wax. Wax reliquaries. Um hold on, I got other reliquary in here. The first thing I showed was a reliquary. The bag was a reliquary. That was a reliquary. Oh, I didn't show this one. That This is a reliquary, too. Hold on. Let me go back. I just try to present every picture I have because it might be helpful to somebody. But, uh, okay, so what else do I got here in reliquaries? Uh, that bag, there's a bag. This crown is interesting, and actually today I was trying to find color pictures of it, and I have not been able to find any. Um, I was at the <coughs> website of the cathedral that it's at, and I was trying to find pictures, you know. COVID was good for me because a lot of the museums closed down, but they were still coming in. They said, well, if we're getting paid and we're here. We might as well do something. So a lot of stuff that never got digitized got digitized the last couple of years. But this is not one of them. I haven't been able to find this one. And this, this, one, this picture looks like it was taken in the 30s. And it was in Germany. And, you know... 
God only knows where it is now. I haven't had any luck. It's the only picture I've ever been able to find of it. Um, and here's another reliquary, little, little reliquary bag. Just lined with pearls again. And that one's silk and linen. Topaz, pearls, garnets, glass, silver. And if I have a page to the museum it's at, I try to provide it. Um, we'll see if they have anything new over there. I think I grabbed every picture they had. But, uh, but yeah, so I do have some reliquaries. Um, not as many as you'd think. Like I said, most of it seems to be in vestments. Um, a, a large portion of it is vestments, at least early on. Like I said, then, then, then when the English get, you know, then, then, then the Germans put it on their clothing and the English put it on everything else at that point. <laughs> at which point the Germans are out of the business. You know, by, by, the, by the 17th century, the Germans are like, no, nah, we're not doing beadwork anymore. We're done. So <laughs> it's, I haven't done anything, and really anything German after like, like you know, fifteen hundred or so. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me see. Oh, great! More rain. Great, great, great. Um. Anyway, we're about twenty minutes from being from being done. If you guys, you know, if you got anything else, um. You want to ask questions? You just want to ask, see stuff again? I'm here for it. Um, or if you want to just end early and go get a hop on, hop on the rest of your day, I'm cool with that too. <laughs> Thanks for coming, and I'm happy that I had as many people as I did. I was thinking maybe I'd have maybe two people tops. Well, this has been great. I think it's going to lead us to your website, and we're going to have to do more digging. Yeah, that's I I, that's, I I put everything there largely just so you can kind of make your own assumptions. And I was, I was amused when you said you went to the museum and they were taking notes from you. Yeah, yeah, I was too. I was I was like, what are you doing? So, are you actually doing some beating yourself on rep replicating I things? Have to like see this? this person's work. She is absolutely amazing. Okay, I, 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 I have a tab here of my bead work and. Okay. You can see the stuff that I'm doing. Um, so that's where I'm thinking the reason they were taking notes is because a lot of times museum people don't make. They yeah. just extrapolate based on what they observe. And that's where the uh, experimental archaeology comes in. Yeah. Because when you do something and make something, you discover a lot about how it was made in history. Yeah, which is why, which, 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 which that one I called the Bee Gees. I, you know, exactly. I look over each other because I could see that it's it's worked exactly the same way. Because not everybody works will work a corner the same way. Right. And and they did. You know, they they did the outside, they did the inside, and then they filled in the corner. A lot of people will either do, you know, go this way and work their way out, or go this way and work their way in. But they mm -hmm. did this and then went inward and spiraled in. You know, which is which is unusual. And. uh you know, so two different people wouldn't do that the same way. So it's like, this is definitely the same person. <laughs> so I got some of it up here, uh, stuff I've played with. Um, so, that, so that's up there if you want to see it. The cloth crown uh, that you showed, the beadworked crown, uh, is interesting because a lot of people in the SCA have started making cloth coronets, cloth, you know, when they yeah. get and such just because it's lightweight and they can beat it and decorate it yeah without the expense of going through something metal um the the the, the one crown I, the one i had the black and white one i showed was, yeah it was the yeah towards the later period yeah hold on i think i put that in my rum thing hold on that was the i think i called the iron the iron. yeah the iron something. it's totally the crown of saint of Saint uh, somebody, and I think it was on their on their statue or something, and uh, it's probably only about this big. 
Mm -hmm. There's probably one on top of a statue for like her feast day or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it doesn't seem, I, th I think if you use the right materials, maybe lined it with leather, it probably would do pretty good. Um, and especially if you're covering it all with beads. I mean, if I was, hell, if I ever got a burning, if I ever got a, a, a court baronessy, I'd probably make a whole, make a whole beaded one. <laughs> Get my little I'd go, i go to town on it for sure. Uh, girls like Vlad. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the bazaats behind the pearls is an interesting concept. Yeah, well, I, 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 I wouldn't even call them bazaats. I think I'd call them actually sequins. And I, sequins, and there, yeah. are, there are sequins in period. Where's my... Um, yes. Uh, I have a sequins section as well. Hold on. Uh, I got sequins, bracteats, spangles. Um, but when you look at that picture, I mean, when you really get close on it, <laughs> that is what it looks like, you know? It, it looks like a pearl sitting on top of a flat, of a flat sequence, or maybe a, 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 a card fish scale or something, which is where sequins come from anyway, you know? But that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like a round pearl, especially on that far side. Um, on this far side over here, it doesn't look like a round, you know what I mean? Th those are flat profiles. Yeah, your challenge is artistic license. Yeah, I know, I know. And, and the way these pearls up here are drawn, you know, but then these yeah. are drawn so much differently, you know, because they're not, they're not as smooth, you know, and I don't know. And I, and I put that there just as like, hey, that this is an idea. Maybe this was actually sequins. Because I do have sequins in that period. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Hold on. Where's my... Oh, if, if, you hear about spangles in the SC. Look at this one. Mm -hmm. Is that not just fantastic? <laughs> Try crocheting that. Hmm. And that's German, of course. <laughs> a Flinderhuba. <laughs> Halba. Flinderhalba. Um, yeah, there's some sequins on this right here. And it's clearly sequins. Because they're just sewn flat down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I try to include stuff that's, you know, marginally bead bead-ish. I, I don't try to be too strict with it. Um, which is especially hard because in German, anything with a hole in it is called a pearl for the most part. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, oh, this one here. Yeah. Here we go. Look at that. There's sequins for you. Hmm. Little little pieces of gold. And, and, and there's some uh, here's spangles. More more spangles. So I try to I try to have a nice little offering for folks. And this one has sequins too, as I recall. Yeah, this has got sequins all over it. Look at that. Hmm. Whole body there. All over it. Over here, you can really see it. You can see them shining over here. Now, this one, I think they said they may have been repurposed. Um... Woman's waistcoat, bleached linen, embroidered with colored silks, silver gilt filet, and spangles. Uh, yeah, hold on. Here's a good. Just covered in that. The sleeves are just covered in them. Uh, 
There you go. And see right there, there there's a there's a seed bead and a right on top of each one of them. So it's not unhurt, you know, it, it was done. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one I should, yeah, this is this is one with with a uh, uh, bullion too. If I'm moving too fast for people, tell me to slow the hell down. But, uh, now this is 20, 20 years of, well, more than 20 years of work, really. Um, in the last three years, I've added a ton of stuff, though, because just so much has been digitized. And just so much more has just, just hit, hit online than what I've been able to pull out of books. You know, before you had to pull everything out of a book. Now it's all. Now it's they're updating everything. It's fantastic. <sighs> Let's see. Anything else I want? I want to show off while I'm in here. I think the costuming on this one's interesting. All the color triangles on the sleeves. I haven't seen that before anywhere. It looks so German. <laughs> Let's see what else. I think this one's got bullion oh. can't tell there's your your little iron cross was down there on your main page or your uh, iron crown was oh. uh, going keep going keep going I think it was towards the bottom on the left right there black and white oh back up one more there yeah, I wish I could find another picture of that. Ironing crown. It's like, ironing. this is the crown you wear when you're ironing your clothes. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember why I picked that name, but it was in the description or something somewhere I was reading. Huh. Uh, I, I probably need to go back and change that to the crown of... of well, I know there's the Al oh, iron, yeah. Yeah. There's there's the iron crown, which is not actually worn. It's one of those that they hold up. Yeah dangled above the head of the person and they call it the iron craw crown um so i wonder if this is somewhat off the same theme <clears throat> but it's fabric so that so gold filigree uh and a mo email i think is enamel yes it is and i i know a little germ i know a little bit of like technical like read german through the plot you know through these things i can figure it out uh, hmm. Cup. So what you may want to do is just contact the museum and ask them. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I have the Barkirka. Because a lot of times you, uh, you've you've already dealt with this. A lot of times they're thrilled to talk to somebody who's interested in something. Yeah, and I I may have to contact them and say, hey, does this still exist? Do you have any pictures of this anywhere? I have to contact uh, Halberstadt again too, and and say, hey, I'm looking for more pictures of this. Have you have you have you digitized this since 1938 yet? And because uh, they have a lot of stuff online, and I found a great site. Where was it? Oh God. Um. If somebody wants to. I I, I the, the all, um. Halberstadt has an app, and they said when we get our stuff up digitized, it's going to be on this site, and it's like a site where like all the museums in Germany put their stuff. And there's hundreds of museums of stuff on this site. It's crazy. It's probably a link from each of the new museums. <sighs> so, 
but I'll 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 have to find them. Like I said, if somebody wants it, hit hit me with an email later or comment through the site or something. Um, if you want my email address, it is Jen dot Seagrest S E G R E S T at gmail.com. It's on my site. Um, you can find it right there on every page. That top section, welcome from Jen. You'll find my email right there. And um, so if you need to get a hold of me, that's the way to do it. So are you related to Lynn? I think her last name is also Punk. P-U-N-K. She's oh. a Smith, does jewelry work. No, mine's Funk. F-U-N-K. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm reading teeny tiny letters. So oh, Fun with a K. That's what I always say. Um... Uh, no, my husband's name was C my husband was Seagrest. He, he he died he died a year ago this week. So I've been having a bad week. Mm. And within with the election, I have not had any brain power to concentrate. To I, I was gonna do a whole outline. I said, you know what? I've already got everything on the site. I've got it all organized by century. I've got it organized by stuff. I've got it organized every single which way. I'm just gonna go go with it. Just just go with it. So <laughs> this has been very informative. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm glad people, I'm glad, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, I, I haven't done this in about 20 years, so. Uh, well, no, okay. 15 years. I, I, I hopped out of the SCA in 2008 for a while. And I, and I just started getting back in about 2018, so it's it's been a while. I'm glad you got back into it, Grizel. We miss you. <laughs> well, we'll see how much of it I, I stay into, but, you know, I... I I thought it was, I was like, okay, let's get back into it. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Thanks, Brazil. It was a really good class. Thank you. Well, I'll go ahead and then, uh, go ahead and, and uh, I'll, I'll let him go ahead and shut it off. You guys can shut it off whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I, uh, I hope I, hope I made sense and try, tried to go with a, with a, or, uh, with a narrative flow, but it's, it got a little sidetracked to points, but that's okay. <laughs> It's great. It was great. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much, Rizelle. I enjoyed the class. Thank you.